John's talking about the French wing extrusions which are required for four ribs number 14 to 17. The extrusion fitted round the edge of the rib are badly corroded. Um, so when, when, when it comes to an, an, an airworthy, we, we, we'll have to get a load made. And, yeah. Well, we'll, 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 we'll see what, what it's like when yeah. we're taking off, but the, but the experience we've had with this one, I'd, I'd say that we have got problems. With. Yeah. I know for a fact we've got problems with rib six, because that's where the, um, the, the, the lifting points are. Mm -hmm. These are the lifting points for the for the wing. These are what, sorry? Lifting points. Oh yeah. Where you yeah. screw it in and you screw Put an it, eye bolt in. Or screw an eye bolt in, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the same area John was pointing out before the skins were removed, showing a large plug screw in the lifting brackets. While editing this part of the video, I realised the skin is not riveted to the ribs, as in the wingtips. On this video, it shows the stringers are bolted to the ribs and the skins are riveted to the stringers. With the skins on, you can see the row of horizontal rivets, but no vertical rows. This is not relevant to anything really, just an observation. So let's get back to John talking about the lifting points on the wings. 16. These are what, sorry? Lifting points. Oh yeah. Where you yeah. screw it in and you screw Put an eye bolt in. Or screw an eye bolt in, yeah. yeah. And they're, they're sort of flush with the, the skin. Yeah. They are. They're good. There's two on rib six and two on rib 22, the big box structure at the end. Yeah. Um, but on ours, because you're supposed to have a spreader bar on it. Yeah. Yeah. But ours has been lifted without a spreader bar, so those two bits are actually <coughs> oh, bent yeah. inwards. So guarantee that this is no good. It's been bent in yeah. quite severely. Ho hopefully it hasn't broken then. Yes. <coughs> so we know we know we need a bit of that anyway. Yeah. But that, that's the square stuff. Yeah. Again, because of the that. Oh, that's yeah. That's yeah. where the, the edge is folded over, isn't it? A little lift on that one and big lift on that one. So yeah. We've got a mixture. Yeah. So we, we, we shall have to see yeah. what we need and what we need to order. Yeah. We don't really want to get stuff in now and not need it. Yeah. Yeah. Because for these, we, we, we've done as much as we need to do to make them do it, basically. Yeah. We've decorated them, changed rivets where we needed to change rivets. But on the air the ones, they left to come in the component bit. Mm. A longer process. Yeah. Basically. yeah. All things that they call cleaned up, replaced if necessary, planted, yeah. all put back together, and then yeah. it'll take, take at least twice as long. Yeah. It's yeah. quite complicated when you, when you look at it, how many. How many individual parts actually make up one rib? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> These are they're not painted, are they? No, well, no, no, no. They're just so soda blasted. Those two have been we've had to corrode. The soda, the soda blasted will take will take the loose corrosion off, but it, it, it won't take the the, the pitted in corrosion. So no. we've got to do that mechanically. Yeah, basically. Oh, paint. Have you got many of these to replace? None. 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 Oh, that was good then. We've got an issue with a couple of holes. There's one there and there's one up here. A smaller one up here. What will you do? Cut, cut that out and, and, and put an insert piece in. So you'll cut that out and more or less put a, an angle piece in there yeah, then, will you? Like, like an L shape yeah. piece in there with a, yeah. with a little cover plate over, over the top to, to hold it all in. Yeah. That's good then. Yeah. yeah. Can then. Um, Bob, get them in the paint shop. Well, he got them in, so he must do. Oh. Only just. <laughs> <laughs> Only just. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're a bit of a pain because they're long and thin. Yeah. Big big flat pieces are great yeah. for, for, for blasting yeah. and, and for painting because you've yeah. got such a long, a big area. Yeah. This, you've got such a concentrated area. Yeah. They wouldn't you'd, put you'd, three or four together then and no, turn them over no. and do them like it wouldn't work that way. No, you'd, you'd, miss, you'd miss loads of it. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. if, if, if you're painting that, that angle, yeah. you'll, you'll get that, you'll get that, you'll get that, but you won't get the, 
the back yeah, of that lip. Yeah, yeah. So you've got to... Yeah. Can you change the spray nozzle on this spray gun to a fan? To a... Oh yeah. 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 Let's say it all depends what angle you're taking and what you're going to hit and what you're going to miss, basically. Yeah. It's, it's annoying. Yeah. It's, 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 it's the same with the blast gun. You, yeah. you sort of blast the and then you realise that you haven't, haven't caught that edge on your... Yeah. John took me round to see the top yeah. spar from the French training the edge. Spar off this off. is the one Dennis stripped down. It was sort of... Ooh! <laughs> These are supposed to be straight. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know about that one yet. We haven't even bolted it. But that's, that's given us a nice straight line at the minute. Yeah. Yeah. So it just shows you that that, that wing, when it got dropped and, and, and crushed those ribs yeah. from, what was it, from 17 to 14. Yeah. Then they were crushed in. It, it, it must have affected the spar mm. as well. With this not being an airworthy one, will you bother to try and correct the spring or will you put the spring in back in the jig as a straight line? Uh, well, we might have a go at straight here. Yeah. Because it, 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 it's no good having having that in it because it, it, it's yeah. got a memory and it's forever trying to... Go back, it's, it's isn't it? It's not good for the metal. Yeah. You know, even, even for a static, it's not, it, it's not good for the no. metal. Oh, see, the other end it's uh, really wandering off isn't it? Oh yeah, it was quite surprising when he took yeah. the belt out and just pinged off. Ooh. Didn't expect that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey Keith was showing me that. Yeah. That's fantastic Absolutely isn't it? Absolutely classic that is. Isn't it? Yeah, it's it unbelievable. It was flying with that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it just, it, it Do you just think it'd be a repair or when it was first made? Oh, that, 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 that's a repair. Yeah. There's obviously been, obviously, they've either been taking the aileron off because to take the aileron off, you don't disconnect it at the hinge, you take the hinges yeah. off the top of the wing, yeah. complete with the aileron. So they're, they're either taking the aileron off, that side you can't tell. No. So that head is for this one or for that one? That one. That, for that the shank smaller. there is that bolt there. That was in, totally encased by the by the anchor nut. Yeah. You couldn't see that. All you could see was that sticking through. Yeah. And when we took the anchor nut off, it was oh hello. <laughs> Back to the Doncaster rear fuselage, KB976. This is a view from the ground, looking up at the identification light holder. Phil fitted this brass plate, which must have come from the original skin. Phil's not here today, so I asked Dave what it was for. He was not sure, so he told me to ask John. What's it for? Near the doorway, a brass plate. Looks like you put a key in it or something. No, no, it's a static vent. Sorry? It's part of the Pito static system for the instruments. It's a static vent. Oh, is it? Yeah. And when the static, is something hanging out of it to get rid of the static into the air or what? No, no, no. It, 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 it's just. It, it, it's a. It's a it measures um, sort of air pressure, basically. Oh, it's an instrument, yeah. not a yeah. Yeah, it, it's just a tube, and it goes goes to a bellows and it, it, it just. Oh, I'm with more, you now. Yeah. Or airspeed indicator, or whatever it goes to. Yeah. Basically. And they call them the static vent because yeah. they're not moving, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking of static electricity. No, yeah. No. I thought it was. No, we have we have static wicks. On, that, of on, course on, you do. On the tail plane, on, 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 right, on the others yes. and on the, yeah. on the ailerons. Yeah, about that, a foot long, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. yeah. I remember Look, those. Uh, wire that flaps around. And yeah. This is just a static vent, a static vent. Yeah. For either measuring some sort of pressure or speed. Yeah, for the, for the instruments, yeah. Yeah, for the instruments. Right. I'll go and inform Dave because Dave didn't know what it was for. <laughs> Right, I'm in. I'm with Spen in the electronics department. Right, what we've got here 
is a, a rotary test table and it's for testing if you like the pneumatic instruments on the well not pneumatic the vacuum instruments on the aircraft like up here we've got a direction indicator um, and here I've got a slip and turn um, now these are gyroscopically controlled and they work on uh, the aircraft vacuum which is uh, we're running at and I'll just give it just that so four inches of mercury is what we're running at here uh, we just run in the gyro up now and the way it does it is it evacuates the chamber and sucks air if you like through the bottom or through a little valve and then a series of nozzles force the air that's coming in onto the gyro itself to force it round and rotate it. It's a very ingenious system. Um, and so what we're doing so here it's now vacuum operated is vacuum the operated. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're using we're using the the force of the vacuum to suck air in, and the air coming in is making the gyros rotate. Well, like I said, we're working at four inches of mercury here, which is. It's not that much of a vacuum, but it's enough to, to get the air to suck through. Yeah. Right, I'll uncage that now to run up. So the direction indicator, right, is not a compass per se. The idea is uh, the the pilot would set it and we zero it to his desired heading, and it would then show. I'll move it by hand, and it would show if he's drifting off. I don't know whether you can see that on camera. Let me just zoom in on that a bit closer. Well, as I rotate it, it stays you know, like geostationary. So it shows the aircraft is off course. That's right. It shows that the aircraft is changing course. Yeah. Um, so it's an easy identifier for the pilot. Uh, it is. Yeah. Now the thing with the with the, with the test table. Okay, so it's, this these were used oh right through into the 90s on the old analog equipment. Um, you know, the Dominus and jet streams that were still flying in the 90s. Um, still used, same sort of kit, it's vacuum operated. Um, uh, but they were, uh, some of it was electrically operated, so we've got electrical outlets on the top. Uh, but we're not using those, we haven't got any of that kit. And that means I can ignore all this lot, which is for controlling the power. Yeah. So all I'm interested in is the is the motor. Now I'm going to move over to this side now, I need to be over this side. Um, what do I best do? Yeah, just press it. As long as you can see these two, we're not going to bother with the clock because this does have an automatic feature, or it would have. Um, what it would do, I'll just get it rotating, so we'll go clockwise. So what we do now, we're exercising this gyro. So instead of having to do it by hand, um, you're doing it automatically. Now, this does have an automatic feature whereby you do 30 seconds in one direction then 30 seconds in another. But unfortunately, uh, like, like I said on, uh, on my previous video, if I do that, it emits the magic smoke. So there's something wrong in there somewhere. But it seems to work fine this way, and so that's all right for now. So we're running at um, 360 degrees per minute, which is 1 RPM. We, we can, I can adjust that, I can adjust it up, and I can adjust it down if need be. And that's running at 300, not quite with you on that gauge. Okay, so... Rest I'll put, per I'll, minute. I'll put it back to 360. Mm -hmm. So this table is rotating 360 degrees per minute. is simply just to exercise the gyro, make sure that it's not sticking and it's not toppling. Um, yeah. uh, but we need the auto function to do. Yeah. But certainly uh, for just exercising uh, the instruments, I mean for, for doing the slip and turns, I mean we can if I can find the right if I can find the right if I can find the right button. Yeah, we can actually 
Oh, so you've tilted the table now by the aircraft. You can actually tilt the table. And you've still got the same effect. Yeah. See, if it's, see if we still get the same effect. Yeah. yeah. So you see whether the tilt of the aircraft affects the rotor. Yeah. yeah. Very nice piece of kit. I like playing with this It's a purely analog. It's a good handy little piece of equipment it is. to test it. Is. It is. Something you need if you're going to maintain well, aircraft. It is. We do have. We do have some more of this stuff to turn up. Yeah. Um, Where did this come from then? Donated or? No, this this is an eBay purchase. Move that one back. Yeah. Uh, I've turned direct indicator. All you, in fact, your your blind flying panel, basically, uh, it, basically what the flying instruments are on these aircraft, um, mm. and that is all. Um, you've got your. Airspeed indicator, of course, which is Pinto statics, mm. and everything else works off, works off the aircraft back. Spen uploaded a video on this subject, so I'll put a link in the description box.